Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ADSRCourses.com, and welcome to part four of our series on the new blocks framework in Reactor 6. In this video, I'll go over the blocks template, which is an ensemble to help builders design their own blocks modules. For more free Reactor content, please check out our website at ADSRCourses.com got tons of free reactor content and much much more. So up at the top we have a collection of knobs in different colors and sizes. Uh, these are just provided to us to give us access to the various graphics files in the blocks framework. So it's pretty useful um, but we won't really be doing anything with them in this tutorial. And directly beneath that, we have two instruments that are basically identical other than the color schemes. And if we take a look inside, you'll see we're provided here with a plethora of macros. And these are all different panel elements. We have a bunch of different knob types and different sizes um, and different modulation options and we've got a bunch of buttons as well. So these instruments provide us with all of the various panel elements that we'll need to work with the blocks framework. And beneath our two panel element instruments, we have a series of instruments that are simply bare bones blocks modules. They have just the barest structure of the blocks framework inside of them and it's up to us to fill them out. And then finally, inside our structure view, we have one last collection of modules for the macros for the blocks framework inside the process macros core cell here. So this is an immensely helpful collection of macros, and we won't be needing them for this tutorial, but I will cover some of them in future tutorials. But for now, I want to take a look at the empty um, templates here. I'm just going to choose the dark width of two, but they're all basically the same with different sizes. So inside we'll see the basic structure of a blocks module. And in my opinion, we shouldn't really stray from this basic setup um, because it's very simple and well thought out. And if we all use the same basic method of designing our modules, then it'll be easier for other people to pick them up and modify them to their own ends. So our basic template consists of three macros. Got the system info macro up at the top, got the processing macro, and the panel view macro. So the processing macro is where all of the interesting stuff is going to go on, and it's going to be a core cell. So the system info macro is there to provide that core cell with all of the information that it can't get from core itself, such as the display clock. Um, you could use it for other things, such as incoming MIDI clocks, stuff like that. At the bottom, we have the panel view macro, which is also providing a primary to core interface. But this is all the stuff that's visible on the panel that the user can interact with. So we've got the system macro and the panel macro both providing input to our processing macro. So the processing macro is where all of the audio processing happens. It's also where we add modulation to the knob values. So kind of all the exciting stuff is happening in here whereas our panel view is just kind of full of knobs and stuff, and our system info uh, macro is mostly empty for the most part. So let's take a look at how to add a knob to one of our templates. I'm going to begin by just copying and pasting our dark width 2 template here. And we're going to need a knob from one of our knob instruments. 
I'm going to choose the large bipolar knob. I'm going to copy it and paste it into our panel view. So this macro has two inputs, one of them named AB buttons, and of course it takes the output from the AB button macro. And we can run the output to one of the outputs provided to us from the template. And that will run directly into the processing macro, where um, by default, the knob is running through a smoother and an AB modulation macro. So this is going to both smooth the output of our knob and add the modulation to it as well. So we can create a new quick bus for this signal, name it mix, and I'm going to run it directly into the display latch near the output here. So what's happening to our signal is it's being routed directly back into our panel macro where we'll use it to display the current position of the knob when it's being modulated. So that's how to add a knob with modulation to the blocks template. And we're provided with inputs and outputs for two knobs from the panel macro and the processing macro. But of course, if you need more than two knobs, you can just copy and paste the structures that um, are there for the first two. To change the name, let's hop inside the macro and keep looking for the label inside the macros named such. Do we find a text module? We can change the info inside to change the label of our knob. I'm also going to turn on the frame for our knob macro so we can pick the whole thing up and move it back into the center of our template here. And we can turn the frame back off again. All right, so now we have a new knob with built-in modulation added to our template. I'm also going to add a simple uh, label here to give a name to our blocks module. So I'll copy and paste the text from one of our instruments and I'll just change the name to something like crossfader, um, which isn't going to fit. So maybe we can just change the name to crossfade or cross or something. So as you might have guessed, I'm going to spend the rest of this tutorial showing you how to build a very basic crossfader in the blocks framework. And this is just something that I felt like was missing from the uh, original release that's very simple to build. So it serves as a pretty decent beginner's tutorial. So the crossfader is going to take two audio inputs and um, mix between them depending on the position of our mix knob. So this is going to be incredibly easy to design I'm going to get rid of all the inputs and outputs from our template macro here that we don't need. So we're going to have a single output, and I'm going to rename the inputs input 1 and input 2. To do the actual crossfading, we can use the crossfader in the reactor factory library. Uh, to get to that, I'm just going to hit enter and type in xfade. Um, we can run the two audio signals into the two audio inputs and the mix signal into the X input. The bottom input determines the sample rate, so we'll just use the audio sample rate for that. And we can run the output from the crossfader into the output for our processing macro. And that's it. That's all we have to do um, for our simple blocks crossfader. There's a lot we could add, of course, 
But at this point in time, uh, things will be perfectly functional. And in a moment, I'll wire up just a very basic blocks connection to make sure that everything's working OK. All right, so I'm just going to take a moment to rename some inputs and outputs here. In future videos, we'll be going over some more of the macros and panel element options that we have. I just wanted to keep it really simple for this video. Um, you could very easily design some pretty complex stuff, uh, not using anything more than the uh, elements that we've shown just in this video. But of course, it can get a lot deeper as well. And so we'll be getting into that. Um, but first, I just want to take a quick moment to build a really simple um, blocks noise maker here and make sure that our crossfader actually works. So I basically just got a sine wave and a sawtooth running into our uh, crossfader, and then we can uh, modulate the position using an LFO down here. So this isn't designed to sound good, but just to make sure that our uh, system is working here. All right, so you can hear the crossfader working, switching between the sine wave and the sawtooth. Once again, this is Salamander Anagram. Um, for more of my work, please check out reactortutorials.com, and thank you for watching.